I've just gathered all the materials to make the low flow intake for the ram pump. Now, whenever I was uh, drawing out for you last week, I forgot to mention that I really wanted this to be a very low flow intake. With the uh, higher volume of water going into a ram pump uh, intake, like dropping a filter into a pond or a big pool in a large creek, is fairly simple to prevent sediment. But when you've only got uh, 10 gallons per minute or less, um, it's just a lot of sediment and silt flowing through that creek and it's hard to get um, a lot of water unless you really uh, back up the water and make a dam. So I'm hoping to make a, a dam free intake and <laughs> Emma's with me today. She's a little bit fussy so you might hear her. So here's what I've got. I have a three inch pipe right here. I've got a one inch unisil with a one inch pipe and these connectors here will just go from the one inch pipe to a barb fitting. So this may change um, depending on how your setup is. And then I've also got some screen and oops, I need to find where my hose clamps are. I just made two cuts. The three inch pipe is 19 inches long and the one inch pipe was about 22 inches long. That gives me enough room to go through the pipe here most of the way and then have a cap and a unisil in that cap, hopefully. And then enough room down here to attach that to. So let's do those things real quick. Now I would like a cap on this end and a cap on this end. I'm probably not going to attach them, just uh, slip them on and leave them unglued. And then on this side, I'm going to have the unisil in here, and then the pipe will go through there, and that'll be there. This one inch pipe is going to have lots of holes in it in here to allow water to flow in. And then this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. What I would like to do is, of course, leave enough room for the cap and some screen attachment here. So let's come out about here and let's see what that is. That's four inches. So let's come here and go four inches roughly. And that gives enough room for the cap and something for the screen to grab onto. So this will be the window here of where the water will be coming into the pipe. Now, uh, there were several great ideas for how this should be done, but then I got to thinking, instead of having the screen wrap around the entire piece here with various sized windows cut through to allow water to pass into, what if, let's do a side view here, what if I were to cut from, say, here to here and make an angled piece where the water would flow down, go into this, have a channel to run into, and the debris would just flow over the top. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do here first. Forgot to hit record. So I just drew a little window opening from here to here, and it goes this way and up and then over. So the water will come flowing in here pass over this and keep going, hopefully with pushing the silt. And that way, when this pipe is in here, it'll have enough holes to um, pull through here. We'll see how well it works. Okay, now that the window is cut in there, looking nice, I'm going to cap one end. Doesn't have to be terribly tight. And then the other end needs to have the hole drilled in for this one inch pipe to go through. I managed to get the one inch pipe into the unisil here. Had to use my adjustment tool pretty serious to get it in there, but got it. 
So as you can see, when I slip this into the three inch pipe, it will rest in there just below the lip, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So pull that out. The next step is to put lots of little holes in this pipe so that water can get in here and then flow down creek. All right, I got some holes put in there. I think that'll do quite nicely. Now I'm just going to set this in here. Okay, doesn't have to be super tight. And then I'm gonna put this on this end. Uh, same deal, I can tighten that up later if I need to. And then I want to use uh, this barb fitting. Oops. Reducer first. And then hmm. Okay, that's better. I found out that I had a one inch to three quarter inch already in my box of stuff there, so that should do quite nicely. Okay. Alright, now the time is come to put screen on here. I went to the hardware store and found some of these dryer hose clamps, which should do nicely to hold this screen in place. So I'm just going to wrap this around here. Hopefully get it decently tight. So that gives two wraps of this screen. Now I just want to put these clamps on here and tighten them down which may take a little while here. These hose clamps seem to do the trick. They are holding that screen in there quite well. Now it is doubled over in here, which I'm interested to see if that's going to cause some debris to get stuck between there, or if it'll pass through better or flow over. And of course these holes are uh, fairly big for uh, passing uh, silt. So the thought is, uh, hopefully most of the large debris, like leaves and stuff, will pass over this and then uh, the water will go into the holes and all of the silt will just build up in this pipe. And so later on you can just pick it up, pull off the end cap, and drain that out and be good to go. So let's take this down to the creek, hook up a three quarter inch uh, supply line to it. And what I want to do is sink it in and let it fill up a bucket with water and we will be able to measure how much silt actually makes it into that bucket from the intake. This is actually a good time of year for me to be testing this because we've had a bit of a drought and the creek is down pretty good. Uh, I would say as much as uh, 30 or 40 gallons per minute. So I think I'm going to just pick a spot here and dig down a little bit with some rocks and that way I can sink this into a little pool. And so my original thought was this would be great for a very low flow source. And so this is probably even more of a source than I was anticipating for this design. But it should give us some pretty good results here with uh, just debris and all that in general. So my thought was just bury this in the creek enough to get flow over top of it. Let's see, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be better to have this on that end because it's downhill. So I'm gonna spin this around if it'll let me. Ah, there we go. Okay, we're close to what I'm envisioning here. I got everything sunk into the creek here and I attached a half inch pipe I know that I originally had planned for a one inch or a three quarter, but at this point it's just testing stage. So as you see, the whole thing is angled slightly down creek, which is what I was hoping for. And I've tilted this fairly steep. I think it'd be better if it were a little bit deeper and the water could just flow directly over this screen. As it is now, I'm not sure if leaves will pass over or if they will get stuck like that and cause an issue. But I think if a good rain were to come, it would wash a leaf 
over the screen and it would pass on. So um, what I'd like to do is, well, let me show you the, the other end here. I just have a half inch pipe there and it runs down. Now, one thing you have to consider is that this is not a siphon. So any point from the, the pipe there to the end that is higher than that input, it will stop everything from filtering. So uh, anyway, it's just going right down here. I think I have enough drop that I can set a bucket in and get a good test. So what I would like to do now is throw some debris at this. We'll first place my bucket under that pipe and then throw some debris at this system to see how much sediment will uh, go through here. As you can see, the bucket is empty and clean. So I'm gonna see about sticking this up here and just fill it up. And I'm gonna start throwing some debris at this system and see if it's going to cause any issues here. All right, I'm gonna make a clear path to the piece here. Like that. And now I'm gonna start throwing some leaves first at it. I've got a bunch of crushed up leaves right here that I can just toss down and see what they're gonna do. Well, it's still flowing. It doesn't seem to have stopped it yet. Let me pack these down and see what happens. I still hear the bucket filling up. So, and I think with enough water that would wash over the screen and do a decent job. So not too bad. Now I'm gonna stir up a bunch of this sand up here and see how much gets into the bucket down there. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go check out the results. As expected, it is passing a lot of that silt because the screen on that is not very small. But if that screen was going to another bucket intake that was collecting the uh, small debris on the bottom, it would be excellent to have. So I think so far, this is a good setup because that right there is definitely pulling enough to run a small ram pump, like a half inch pump. So my thoughts on this setup, pretty good. It's gonna pass sticks and leaves decent with enough water flowing over the top. And it is definitely kicking out enough water down here for a half inch pump. So I think it is definitely a valid means of the very first intake for a ram pump. So what it would do, it would pull in enough water to send down to a bucket intake. Now. What is a bucket intake? I'll show you mine here in just a bit so you'll know what I'm talking about. But it basically just filters out the large stuff and gets the water from the creek into the system. So I think it is a very valid option for getting the ram pump started at least. When I say bucket intake, this is what I'm referring to. Basically this pipe right here would be the half inch pipe that we were just observing, bringing water into this system the drive pipe would start midway up the bucket so that debris can gather in the bottom and can be flushed out with a clean out like this one right here. That way you're able to clean out all that silt that gathers up in the bottom and then still have plenty of time before the pump clogs up because you've got that couple of inches of fresh clean water right there. I'm going to continue to let this system over here flow and come back in a week or so and see how well it's doing, if it's clogged up or if the bucket has filled with sand or silt. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and share with someone who may need this information. If you have some fun tips you might uh, want to share, write those down below. I'm always looking to learn something. Now, if you would like to purchase a ram pump, I have four models for sale at landahouse.com or on Amazon. So link to this, those in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.